See, tech doesn't mean anything. Excuse me. Are there too many secrets? There's a secret about our modern world, our world of digital computers, information technology that most people don't know. But in 1992, a mostly forgotten Hollywood movie gave away the secret, which might be why Sneakers is mostly forgotten. Watching Sneakers today is a trip back to the Hollywood of yore. Robert Redford was the Brad Pitt of the 1970s. The Sting, The Great Gatsby, Three Days of the Condor, back when Hollywood made real movies with real movie stars. But by 1992, Redford's star was waning. Redford was known for films with real political bite. The Candidate, all the president's men that exposed government corruption. So you could see Sneakers as a late career Redford returning to the political theme that gave him superstardom. Because Sneakers has something to say under its comedic outer wrapper. Dan Aykroyd is a literal legend of comedy, the last blues brother, the original Ghostbuster, and now a new sneaker. So it kind of makes sense that he's here as supporting actor to Redford. But then Sidney Poitier appears, and you think, huh? Sidney Poitier was the Denzel Washington of his era. In a career of over five decades, making movies that challenged the racial politics of America, including the legendary in the heat of the night. Poitier's late career appearance in this lightweight comedy caper seems incongruous. I'll relax when we get that damn thing out of here. Until then, you stay. Except there's more to sneakers than the average heist movie, like River Phoenix. River fucking Phoenix, older brother of Wacky, legendary victim of a drug overdose outside the Viper Lounge that cut dead a career tipped for the heights of Hollywood fame. Oh yeah, then there's one of those actors who seems to be in every other Hollywood movie and you don't know who he is, but the movies are always good. And hot from the Oscar juggernaut Dances with Wolves, add in Mary McDonnell. That's President Laura Roslin to most of us. Then just as Sneakers is calming down, Ben Kingsley shows up. Dry aspirin. Yes, actual Ben Kingsley. What the hell is this movie? And why is Sneakers forgotten today? Today, you can't trust anybody. In 1989, Hollywood had an unexpected sleeper hit with Field of Dreams, starring Kevin Costner. I have just created something totally illogical. If you build it, he will come. This game is a part of our past, Ray. It reminds us of all that once was good. Hey, is this heaven? No. Iowa. James L. Jones' supporting role in Field of Dreams is likely why he appears in the final act of Sneakers. Field of Dreams was a phenomenon, and its writer-director Phil Alden Robinson got to choose his next project, which, combined with Redford's star power, brought an unlikely comedy caper about hackers and the United States security apparatus to the big screen. The latest development from Google that it describes as a state-of-the-art quantum computer chip. The risk is most modern encryption relies on certain mathematics that are very difficult to do one way, but very complicated to undo. So okay. there's kind of risks, but there's a solution there. That is good to know. A group of hackers are employed to steal a MacGuffin. The hackers are double-double-crossed, setting up the main heist, which the hackers complete and live happily ever after. Sure, hackers are a bit of a twist on bank robbers, but Sneakers is basically a very simple heist movie, with some glaring internal contradictions. The movie builds up anticipation by telling us You won't know who to trust. But in the end, the baddies are just some gangsters with shotguns in an office building. 
And after getting the MacGuffin, there isn't a government on this planet that wouldn't kill us all for that thing. Ben Kingsley just leaves it in his office. Sure, it's a highly secured office and this sets up the heist, but it's unbelievably lax for such a powerful item. Then midway through the movie, as the heroes make a daring escape, Sidney Poitier adjusts his earlier statement. The NSA doesn't kill people, Martin. Who are they? You said it last night, there isn't a government on Earth. They wouldn't kill for that thing. Not ours. Who were those guys? And it's about this point where we, the audience, start to realise that, oh, it's not the mobsters who are the bad guys. It's the security apparatus of the United States government. No, I don't buy it. I know you. We were going to change the world, Marty. Remember? Did you ever get around to actually doing it? No, I guess not. Well, what's wrong with this country, Marty? Money. Politicians are bought and sold like so much chattel. Our problems multiply. Pollution, crime, drugs, poverty, disease, hunger, despair. Listen. When I was in prison, I learned that everything in this world, including money, operates not on reality, but the perception of reality. People think a bank might be financially shaky. Consequence, people start to withdraw their money. Result, pretty soon it is financially shaky. Conclusion, you can make banks fail. Psst. I've already done that. I might even be able to crash the whole damn system. Destroy all records of ownership. Think of it, Marty. No more rich people, no more poor people. Everybody's the same. Isn't that what we said we always wanted? Because you haven't gone crazy, have you? Security agencies in the age of information pose an especially knotty problem for we the people. Neil Stevenson's classic of historical science fiction, Cryptonomicon, exposed the entwined histories of security agencies, information technology, and cryptography. The cryptographic activities at Bletchley Park led to the invention of the computer by Alan Turing, and then to the establishment of permanent security agencies like the CIA and NSA. Everything from your email and social media messages to power stations, air traffic control, and nuclear launch codes can only function because they are securely encrypted. Break those codes and you could break the modern post-industrial world. And so security agencies are given the power to keep our secrets secure and break the codes of opponents. But that also gives these agencies the power to violate our security, which of course they never do. We trust. A spectre is haunting the modern world, the spectre of crypto anarchy. The opening lines of the 1988 Crypto Anarchist Manifesto by Timothy C. May capture the revolutionary spirit of cypherpunk. Cypherpunks like May and Eric Hughes believed that to balance the power of the government and its security agencies, we the people needed to be able to encrypt our own information. Cypherpunk inspired the development of encryption protocols for personal privacy and led to the technologies of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And so personal security was secured. Right? Right? Still in CIA in 72? Did you know the deputy director of planning was down in Managua, Nicaragua the day before the earthquake? Now what are you saying? The CIA caused the Managua earthquake? Well, I can't prove it. I can't talk to that guy. A lot of the humor in sneakers comes from Sidney Poitier's exasperated rejections of Dan Aykroyd's collected conspiracy theories about the CIA and US government, from the Kennedy assassination to a faked moon landing. Poitier's exasperation, much like our own dealing with conspiracy theorists, is not just that we don't know for certain that the moon landings weren't faked. There is always an infinitesimal possibility that they could have been. But that when it comes to security agencies, we not only don't know, we can't know. Security agencies must, in order to operate effectively, hold a massive, information asymmetry over everyone. 
your door is only secure if you had the information to open it and nobody else does. And your nation is only secure if only your security agencies had complete access to all information. This information asymmetry then sets up a situation known in game theory as the principal-agent relationship. If you hire a literary agent to sell your book, to do their job, that agent must have more information about publishers than you do. To ensure the agent's incentives are aligned with yours, they must be paid only a percentage of your earnings. But an agent with a sufficient information advantage can always find a way to outplay their own principle. For instance, a slimy literary agent might undersell one book to secure a better deal for another book. This happens all of the time. We as principals secure our relationship to our agents by relying on their rational self-interest. But as demonstrated in the brandenburger keisler paradox, players in a principal-agent relationship can't be relied upon to act rationally. To make a rational decision, the principal and agent must understand what the other party believes about their relationship and then understand their beliefs about those beliefs. But as we try to understand the beliefs others hold about our beliefs, we enter a game theoretic paradox where players can no longer make rational judgments. Once you pass the game theoretic complexities of this scenario, it comes down to this. We the people can never know that powerful security agencies are acting in our interests. We can only trust don't that they are. You can't do it because I know you can. And don't tell me you won't do it because I've got to have it. Damn it, I need to know and I need to know now. Unless. The MacGuffin in Sneakers is not a quantum computer, but it does do the scary thing that quantum computers threaten to do. How is this possible? Cryptography systems are based on mathematical problems so complex they cannot be solved without a key. So it's a code breaker. No, it's the code breaker. No more secrets. If encryption is like tying a knot in a rope, Decryption is untying the knot, but quantum computing doesn't so much untie the knot as turn the rope to spaghetti. Ever try tying spaghetti in knots? Our mass media discussions of quantum computing and encryption only show this possibility as a negative, but some cypherpunks see it differently. The Edward Snowden revelations of 2013 confirmed what many cypherpunks believed that the principal-agent relationship was broken, that security agencies were backdooring personal encryption systems. So the only remaining solution to this information asymmetry, if we the people can't keep secrets from the state, is to make sure the state can't keep secrets from us, or that anyone can keep secrets from anyone. The world isn't run by weapons anymore, or energy, or money. It's run by little ones and zeros, little bits of data. There's a war out there, old friend. A world war. And it's not about who's got the most bullets. It's about who controls the information. The only true answer to the principal-agent relationship is to break all encryption and free all of the secrets. I'm Bernard Abbott. National Security Agency. We spoke on the phone. I believe you have something that belongs to me. It's this radical proposition that leads to the strange final scene of sneakers. Redford, Aykroyd, Poitier, Phoenix, McDonnell, and that guy in every other Hollywood movie, as the sneakers stand in for We The People. We've caught the NSA red-handed doing the dirty on our principal-agent relationship, having built the technology to break all encryption. But the sneakers, like us, are caught in a game-theoretic paradox. I want to win a bagel. What? Once all the iterations are played out, we can only trust that our security agencies are acting in our best interests. 
We can only trust that the Five Eye security agencies spying on each other's citizens are doing it for the purposes of stopping terrorist mass killings and violent crime. Not to, you know, compile lists of domestic political opponents to be sent to the gulag when the time comes. And we can only trust that if we catch the security agencies betraying the principal-agent relationship, they will prove to be benevolent and good-humoured about it, and buy us off with a Winnebago, round-the-world tickets, and a date with a hot female spy, rather than render us to a black site for enhanced interrogation, blah, blah, blah. We can really only trust that we are the good guys, or we can do as Robert Redford does and free all of the secrets. Nope. I don't want to suggest that Sneakers was memory hold by the establishment for saying the quiet bit out loud, because we don't know that. Because we can't know that. Anyway. Watch this video about the forgotten meeting between H.G. Wells and Vladimir Lenin next.